Hello students, welcome to the lecture series of fluid mechanics. Myself, Professor Dhruv Patel. In our last lecture, we have learned about basic construction and working of the Pelton wheel turbine and condition for maximum efficiency for the Pelton wheel turbine. In today's lecture, we will understand basic design concepts of Pelton wheel turbine and we will solve one example based on design of Pelton wheel turbine. Right? Let us understand design aspects of Pelton wheel turbine. So at the first, we have to revise velocity triangle for the Pelton wheel turbine. You have to remember that for the velocity triangle, double hemispherical blade will be there and jet is acting at tangential direction to the blade. If the water is acting here, so jet will be moving in these two directions, right? From the sketch, first of all, we have to draw V1, that means jet velocity. That Then we have to draw U1, here jet velocity and blade velocity. Both are in same direction and same line, right? So relative velocity will be Vr1 here, that means Vr1 is equal to V1 minus U1. This can be understood by simple equation. Suppose our jet velocity will be 100 meter per second and our blade velocity will be 30 meter per second. Then relative velocity must be 100 minus 30, 70 meter per second. Clear? So here V1, U1 and Vr1 is there. After that, we have to draw two components of V1. First component is flow velocity which is vertical component and second component is ball velocity which is horizontal component. Here main component is horizontal so there is no vertical component of it so we have to write Vf1 is equal to 0 and V1 itself becomes Vw1 right. So inlet velocity triangle is there for the outlet velocity triangle. At first we have to draw relative velocity that means Vr2. After that, we have to draw blade velocity u2. After that, we have to draw resultant velocity v2. So this triangle is complete. Now two components of v2. One vertical component is vf2 and horizontal component is vw2. Here direction of vw2 is left hand side direction, right? Now angle between resultant v2 and blade direction that will be alpha and angle between relative velocity and blade direction that will be beta. And here it is our deflection angle. Five, right. So let us take some close look at the design aspects of Pelton wheel. First of all, CV. CV that means coefficient of velocity. It is ratio of the two velocity. First of all, V actual divided by V theoretical. Here actual velocity of the jet that means V1 and theoretical velocity we already derived it under root 2G H. So we can write this V1 is equal to CV into under root 2G H. This is our first equation v1 that means jet velocity will be cv under root 2g h second speed ratio ku speed ratio is also ratio between two speeds that means u velocity blade velocity divided by theoretical velocity is equal to u divided by under root 2g h that means we can also write u is equal to ku under root 2g h right so this is our second equation third one will be angle of deflection from this can we can understand this from the alternate angle if this angle is beta 2 then also this inner angle will be beta 2. So deflection angle 5 will be total 180 degree horizontal minus beta 2 angle right. Now velocity of the wheel here at the both end of the bucket same velocity occurs because both end of the bucket is attached to the same runner. So velocity of the wheel u1 is equal to u2 is equal to u is equal to pi d n by 60 right where d is equal to diameter of runner. Next one is jet ratio. Jet ratio that means capital D divided by small d. Here capital D is equal to diameter of runner right and small d that means diameter of jet. Clear students? Next one is number of bucket. Number of bucket will be 15 plus capital D divided by 2D. Next one is now total number of jet. How many jet you can arrange for the Pelton wheel turbine? So total number of jet should be total discharge divided by discharge through the one jet. Clear students? And at the last some dimensions of the bucket. Length will be 2D to 3D. So for average value, for average value we can write 2.5 d then width is equal to 3d to 4d for average we can write width is equal to 3.5d and depth is equal to 0.8d 
to 1.2 d let us take average so 1 into d so we have to remind average values length is equal to 2.5 d width is equal to 3.5 d and depth is equal to 1 d here small d is equal to diameter of z clear students so these are basic equation for design consideration for pelton wheel turbine let us take one simple example based on pelton wheel turbine so the following data is related to the pelton wheel turbine head is equal to 72 meter so here h is equal to 72 meter speed of the wheel that means wheel of the turbine 240 rpm n is equal to 240 rpm then shaft power at the wheel that means sp 115 kilowatt so shaft power is equal to 115 into 10 raised to 3 watt speed ratio so we can write speed ratio is equal to ku 0 0.45 coefficient of velocity that means cv here cv is equal to 0 0.98 overall efficiency eta 0 that will be 0 0.85 and design the pelton wheel based on above data so here so much data is there and how can we start the example related to any turbine remember this you have to highlight the data for which you are knowing the equation of it so first of all we are knowing equation of ku we are knowing equation of cv also and we are knowing equation of eta zero also so let us start with ku or cv so first of all velocity of the jet or cv cv will be v1 divided by under root 2g h so velocity v1 there will be c1 into under root 2g h so c1 value is 0 0.98 2g is 9.81 and head is 72 so from the simplification we can obtain v1 is equal to 36.83 meter per second right next one is equation of ku equation of ku is equal to u divided by under root 2g h so we can write u is equal to ku under root 2g h ku is 0 0.45 2 into g is 9.81 and h will be 72 so velocity of the wheel that will be 16.91 meter per second here you have to remember this v1 velocity must be greater than blade velocity u right for the 99 percentage case of turbine now from u we can write another equation of u also so u is equal to pi d n by 60 so we can write diameter d is equal to 60 into u divided by pi n here u is 16.91 from this data 60 divided by pi into rpm is 240 so our diameter of runner will be 1.346 meter next let us solve eta zero equation so efficiency zero that means shaft power divided by water power right so instead of shaft power sp and water power rho q g h so we can write shaft power is 115 into 10 raised to 3 and water power 1000 into g 9.81 q is unknown and h is 72 and eta zero is 0 0.80 if we solve this equation we can get discharge is equal to 0 0.1915 meter cube per second right after that we know that there is another equation of discharge also so discharge is equal to area into velocity so discharge will be area of jet into velocity of the jet that means pi by 4 d square is area of jet into velocity v1 so here discharge q is 0 0.1915 pi by 4 d square and velocity will be 36.83 so from that data we can find small d also so here small d is equal to 0 0.0814 meter now number of bucket in the wheel that will be 15 plus capital d divided by 2 into small d that means 15 plus 1.346 divided by 2 into 0 0.0814 after simplification we will get this value 23.27 but number of bucket is never in the fraction point so we can we have to convert this value into decimal point so we can write 23 as a number of bucket attached on a wheel clear yeah, students at the last we have to find out size of the buckets so first of all width is equal to 3.5 into small d so 3.5 into value of small d that means 0 0.28 meter length is equal to 2.5 d so we can find length also and thickness or depth or height is equal to 1 into d so we can find thickness also right 
so let us revise again design expect for the pelton wheel turbine here i quickly revise it so first of all cv coefficient of velocity that means v1 divided by under root 2 gh so we can find v1 value from it that is known as velocity of jet next one is speed ratio that means ku ku is equal to u divided by under root 2 gh so we can find blade well velocity from this equation ku under root 2 gh then deflection angle phi is equal to 180 minus beta 2 velocity of the wheel that we can write u is equal to pi d and by 60 jet ratio that means capital d divided by small d here capital d is diameter of runner right and small d that means diameter of jet right students here number of bucket z is equal to 15 plus capital d divided by 2 into small d then dimensions of the bucket first of all length is equal to 2.5 d width is equal to 3.5 d and depth is equal to 1 into d in our example first of in any type of example of any turbine you have to first identify which equation is known in the given data so from the given data equation of ku is known equation of cv is known and equation of efficiency zero is known right so let us start with the cv value of cv is equal to v1 under root 2g h that means v1 is equal to cv under into 2g h that means we can find v1 from from it now let us use ku ku is equal to u divided by under root 2g h so u is equal to ku into under root 2g h that will be 16.91 meter per second after that we have to remember second equation of velocity so u is equal to pi d n by 60 from this only capital d diameter of the runner is unknown so we can find diameter of runner right next one from the equation of eta 0 all the value is known but q is unknown so we can find discharge now we have to remember another equation of discharge also so discharge will be area into velocity so discharge will be area of jet into velocity of jet so area of jet will be pi by 4 d square because jet is circular and velocity of jet will be v1 that means we can find small d here right so first of all you have to find capital d and small d for the design after that we can find any value from the design aspect suppose if we want to find z ratio then diameter capital d divided by small d that is known as z ratio m but here we have to find total number of buckets in a wheel that is 15 plus capital d divided by 2 into small d that means 23.27 right but total number of buckets is never in the fraction format so we have to convert this value in the decimal format so it is final value will be 23 at the last we have to find dimensions for the bucket first of all width is equal to 3.5d length will be 2.5d and depth or height will be 1 into d clear students so that is it for the today's lecture thank you for watching my lecture and keep revising fluid mechanics